meeting, uh, May Council meeting, it's May 16, 2018, 7.01 p.m. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask everybody to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda tonight is um, the consent calendar, and there's been one item added to that. Um, there's a number seven public works director's report was added here this evening. Are there, are there any questions? If not, a motion and a second to move it on. I'd move to approve the consent con consent calendar as amended. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, aye. aye. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting organized yet. Okay, motion passes. Uh, next item C is uh, open forum. Is there anyone here this evening who would like to speak on a matter that is not on the agenda? I see, seeing no one running to the podium, um, I will take that as there is not. So um, we will move on to item D. Uh, reports. First one is the city administrator's report. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, the item, the only item I have for you tonight is to set the 2019 budget meeting dates. And um, since that is coming up here this summer very quickly, I would suggest we set workshop dates for 6 o'clock before the regular council meeting for the months of July, August, and September as needed. Um, so we don't have to come on a separate date if that would be convenient for everyone. Just wanted to get a feel make sure that works for the council input that, that works for me i like that idea john yeah ross yeah i mean it works yeah. okay perfect let's do it that's great <coughs> any other any general updates jenny anything else that you have i think the only thing i'd like to mention is to stop by the pickle if you haven't recently they've done a nice job of um, giving their off sale um, some much needed work and um, doing some new things with their coolers and shelving looks really nice and they're still going to work on it some more but uh, Terry and Terry Willeen and Brian Farrell put a lot of work into it so it looks really great so stop by and check it out awesome yeah thank you next on the agenda this evening is a city attorney's report for information Tom thank you mayor and council um, I wasn't here at last meeting, but talking to Jenny since, I understand that the sign at the Niswa part of the Spirit store now is finally kind of coming to fruition as far as getting built and designs and that stuff. So um, we populated your packet today with that easement agreement that we stopped talking about last fall when that conversation kind of took a, took a stop. And so the easement agreement is back kind of on now. We do need an easement agreement from Schaefer's, I think, in order to cite that sign. So the hope is that you would approve the concept and the form of that agreement, and then uh, we would get it to the folks at Shapers for their review and consideration. Okay. Thank you. Council? Does this easement just basically cover the footprint of where that yeah. sign sits? Yeah, and there's no legal description for it, so it will depend on the drawing that is referenced there that you don't have as part of that. That'll, that'll be the reference point for it, obviously, an ingress and ingress to that area. And then just basically kind of a meets and bounds legal? We can have a legal area. Okay. I think just, I'll just, rely just the on box. The of, of where the drawing is and we all understand where it is. And sure. We have access back and forth to it to maintain it. Okay. I think that'll be sufficient. Okay. Okay. Very good. The question is how courier to shapers, Ross, do you want that to? Yeah, I can do that. Absolutely. Okay. This, this isn't anything new for Mr. Schaefer. I mean, he's aware of something that you know, I don't know or we shouldn't be a big surprise. I don't know that we've approached this, but having said that, I can't believe it would be anything I major. I don't think it would be anything major. Yeah. 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 yeah I don't it really protects us and them. So. 
We assume we're looking for a motion here. Yes. So I'll make the motion that we accept this easement agreement as uh, the draft as presented uh, by Tom here and proceed forward. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Tom, do you want to just email me a copy? Okay, thank you very much. City Engineer, Mark. Good evening. Um, I guess uh, at the last week's uh, Planning Commission, Don Jacobson, uh, they were dealing with uh, a, a property north of here and uh, the Tom Stephens is uh, looking at. And Tom, he, he had talked, or Don said he, was, he had talked here about this potential easement here that was never reported and what he said last Tuesday was that he was going to, you know, we're going to talk about it tonight. But uh, what kind of space I can find? I don't think Don has ever talked. <laughs> Did you get the message? Did you say Don has even said this? No. No. Don, Don Jacobs. Oh, Jacobs. Don Jacobs. Yeah, and I'm surprised he's not here. So because he was going to, you know, he, he just announced us to all we'll hear from the attorney next Wednesday at the council. Right. All right. Well, this conversation did start a couple months ago where Don was interviewed for this problem. And Tom Stephens did try to get a hold of me last week. So is that is that development looking for an ingress egress off of that would go across the Paul Bunyan Trail? Is that is, is that well, the crux the, of it, or you know the entrance into the care facility here? You know, they're, 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 the DNR did grant the city a 66 foot wide uh, road easement across here that is recorded at Crowley County, mm -hmm. so that is in place. The the development to the north of the road that you're proposing to come down and connect to, you know, the existing road was put in 28 feet wide because it was all envisioned as a possible street in here to serve that. So Aren't we talking about this tonight? Well, that, in, that's yes. I mean, in number six of new business, isn't that dealing with this? It's in another, correct, Russ, in another okay. direction. Oh, okay. Stephens is approaching it from two different directions. Oh, okay. Trying to see which way you might be able to right. get something to move forward. Okay. So right. anything else, Seth? No, Mark? Thank you. Okay, thanks. New business number E1 resolution calling for a public hearing on the proposed establishment of a tax increment financing district number 1 13 within the development district number 1 and the proposed adoption of a tax increment financing plan relating thereto. Should I read the rest here? Proposed schedule events. I'll just I'll read it for the record uh, 1a is proposed schedule of events for the Sportland Corners redevelopment project E B is memo dated there's a memo dated May 16th 2018 from uh, the city administrator TIF application fee and memo dated April 16th 2018 from Patrick Smith proposed redevelopment of Sportland Corner located at 240066 Smiley Road. Did you want to take it from, do you want to take it and run with it, Jenny? I, I sure can, thank okay. you. Um, so tonight we have before the council kind of an initial uh, preliminary request for consideration of establishing a TIF district um, at that Sportland Corner location. Um, Patrick Smith is here tonight from American National Bank, so I'll invite him up in just a second to um, introduce himself and to just give a little bit of a preview on, on the project that he's looking to, um, to do at that location. Um, but kind of working backwards, the initial memo um, that he sent to the city um, a month ago is included in your packet. It's just a general overview to kind of initiate the discussions. Um, the first step in is, I should step back, I reached out to our consultant, uh, Tom Denaway from Springstead, um, to help step us through how this process might look if the council is in agreement to continue to move forward with this. Um, and so that is what the resolution is here um, in front of you tonight to basically allow us to start that process. Uh, it takes about 60 days to, to go through from, from start and they look at um, the construction and the values and what that will translate into future TIF dollars. 
and um, that's what the, is in front of you tonight. But maybe to back up a little bit, I'll invite PJ up just to introduce himself and to give you a little bit of the um, project. Um, we don't have a lot of details as far as numbers yet. Either way, you can stand up here. And um, But we wanted to give you as much as we have and just get a feel from the council if you're um, okay to move forward. And we just will take it each step of the way and see where we go. So thank you for being thank here you, today. Jenny. Well, thank you. And council, Mayor, Jenny, thank you for getting us on the agenda so quickly. Um, not sure where to start. I, I think with regards to intros, you all know me somewhat, and I certainly know all of you to some degree. So I'll skip over that part. But uh, essentially, good news. American National Bank is looking to uh, build a bank building in Nisswa. So the question becomes, where do we do it? And how do we do it? And that, that uh, of course, will be driven by the location. Uh, my guess is... You're all familiar with Sportland Corner. You're all familiar that it's been sitting empty for quite some time. Uh, it is our A location. It's the location that we want to do our project, but us, like anybody who is in a fiduciary capacity, needs to make sure we're doing it prudently. So from a financial standpoint, uh, without any criticism, the owner of the property is expecting a rather large sum of money for the purchase of that property. Um, if you look at the tax records, if you talk with the owner, which I've done numerous times now, uh, there's perceived value both in the location and in the structure. I've been through the structure, um, guessing that some of you may have been as well. The structure is very... Uh, it's in, it, it, from our perspective, it's a knockdown. It's, it's not anything we can work with. Um, and I think quite rapidly it's deteriorating to the point where it's more than likely a knockdown for anybody who wants to go in there and do a project. So we've written a purchase agreement. We've agreed on price. Um, we have accepted terms both ways, but those terms are completely contingent upon being able to put in place a tax increment financing redevelopment district approved by the city of Nisswa. Uh, so tonight, that's what I'm here to propose and to try and get some feedback on. We, one way or the other, we're coming down. The question is tonight is simply, where are we going to do it? Are we going to do it uh, on Sportland Corner? Or are we going to continue to look around and probably if we do the Sportland Corner project, it'll be an expanded project. We're already talking. We actually are, are close to an agreement with uh, an additional tenant, which would be Stonehouse Coffee, that would be, they would come down there as an, an expansion, not a relocation. And we would do a larger project that would involve additional rental space. If if this, if the tax increment financing, the redevelopment is not something the, the council is in favor of, then we'll simply look for a standalone location and build a bank building. So uh, with that said, I think I'll just open it up for questions. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Um, the question that I have for you is, um, well, I guess there's probably two questions. The first one, you, you've touched on a little bit, uh, one possible tenant maybe is there is there potentially more than one tenant or would it just be the bank and one I, I'm not exactly sure how much how big the bank needs to be and all the square footage parking issues water retentions things like that so um, just clarify to the best that you can yeah if there's yeah. gonna be any more tenants or what the possibilities are that you're considering well, I'll start by saying it's a complete work in progress. From the bank's perspective, it's pretty clear cut. We need about 4,000 square feet. Um, for us to just go in there and build that bank building at 4,000 square feet, it's a significant, given the dollars we're talking about for the property and the redevelopment, and given the location, it's, it's, it does not seem appropriate. So we're, we're kicking around a lot of different things. Right now, it looks like uh, if Stonehouse were to join in, they would be looking at about 1,500 square feet. 
we'd be looking at 4,000 square feet. We're looking at, we're, at this point in time, where we think we're headed on the Sportland location is approximately a 5,000 square foot building on one level, on the main level, and an additional 4,000 square feet of space on a second level that would be serviced by elevator and, of course, you know, all the other requirements. So. And would that be part of the bank, or would that be...? Uh, a small part of it might be, and it would be there for, certainly for future bank expansion, but more than likely for other businesses looking to uh, either expand in Nisswa or to move into Nisswa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, that's all I have for right now myself. I'll wait, hold on the other question. What do you have as projected closing date? Well, we our purchase agreement calls for a closing date of September 3rd. Uh, our, our goal, I mean, if, it, if timing worked out perfectly, we would close on the 3rd and break ground on the project sometime <coughs> around the 15th or, or shortly, shortly after the close date, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the very first step, though, because it doesn't really make a lot of sense to spend a bunch of money designing a building and doing uh, all the planning that we need to do if ultimately the tax increment financing redevelopment district is not something that the council's on board with. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ross? Uh, my question kind of more focuses maybe you, Jenny, or Pat, maybe you can answer it, but tonight's steps really is just the beginning steps and we'll get all the information. I mean, if we proceed to go ahead tonight, all we're saying is, yeah, let's get this started and see where it ends up and see what all the numbers and how, how it all works and have a little, I mean, I had a great education with you on Monday on this and obviously need a little bit more education on it. So if I'm understanding right, we're not really locking into anything. We're just starting to forward to research and get, build information. Am I correct in that assessment? That's absolutely correct. Um, part of this piece is also making sure as the numbers get more solidified um, that obviously that PJ is, is still on board with that depending on how things work out on his end as well as the city's. Um, but I didn't want to engage Springstead too far, to, you know, too far into this until I received the council approval. I anticipate that um, our consultant would either come up here or provide you know, a good deal of documentation as this moves forward over the next couple months to keep you in the loop and, and you know, discuss any hurdles that we might come upon if we do. And we would also be setting this public hearing for July yes. as part of this? Yes, yes. Just based on the noticing requirements that we have and some of that lead time, we have to do that. Um, but if for some reason it was canceled, it's canceled, and, and we don't, we're not out anything as far as that goes. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So what do we, uh, or no, we, is there, uh, Pat, do you have some idea what sort of, I, mean, I don't know that the city's done many TIF projects for, like, redevelopment or to help lower the overall cost of a lot um, it's more been for you know city um, sewer projects you know things like that do you have a rough idea what you might be looking for for or asking in the TIF yeah I th you know I think we're kind of honing in on that um, let me step back first of all the, the I've worked with the city of Diswa on tax increment financing arrangements I'm thinking of the uh, senior center over here the, that was what is classified as an economic development TIF agreement which is different than what we're proposing here ours a redevelopment district and this is this is important is I think from your perspective anyway is one of those things you have to look at and say how bad do we want that area redevelopment redeveloped? Currently, you have a situation where the building, and it, you know, it's not pretty. Mm -hmm. um, it's a site where I'm not the first person to take a run at it. I mean, there's a, a lot of different people have tried. The, the problem is economically to put a deal together with the current owner, given the condition of the building and the deteriorating condition of the building, it's it's the numbers just really don't work so and from the city's perspective currently you have a situation where the property taxes each and every year are diminishing 
the, the money that you're making off of that property. Uh, under a redevelopment district, you would stop that immediately. And you, you can all look. I mean, you can look at the numbers. It's pretty straight trend line down. Um, and you, you, you wouldn't only stop it, but you'd be able to capture a portion of the additional increment uh, through, you know, regulation and how, how it all works. So the city, in my opinion, needs to look at it and decide. I mean, do, or do we want to sit tight and wait and see if somebody eventually comes along? Or do we want to partner up with somebody and figure it out? And so from my perspective, or, or from any investor's perspective who is going to come in front of you and ask for this type of thing, it's, I mean, it's kind of the, I said to Jenny, it's kind of the chicken or the egg situation. How much money do we spend to find out if you're interested? So from my perspective, I'm interested tonight to at least get a feeling of, I mean, if we can put together a project that, that, that you're in favor of, uh, do you support the idea of redeveloping that district and playing a role in doing that? Has uh -huh. there been, I mean, I mean, are you thinking like a three-year TIF, five-year TIF? I mean, I mean, what you mean? I mean, to me, that's a big part of my thinking. Is I mean, what exactly? I mean, I hate to go set a meeting for July and do all this, and I mean, I'd kind of like to have some idea what we're possibly looking at, or maybe I'm maybe I'm missing it. But it seems like once you, once you say, okay, we're going to start down a path, then usually it gets difficult. People start to feel, oh, we can't, we can't change the path because somebody's going to get upset. So I'd like to have a candid conversation now before I make my decisions on. So and, and that's I, where I asked Pat, you know, do you have a feel for what you're looking for? Well, okay, so first of all, TIF is an in interesting animal. So there's there's eligible costs, okay? And those costs can be certified to a TIF note. And that note will, will be, a, you know, just like a bank loan, essentially, uh, where it identifies a principal balance and an interest rate. How it will be repaid is through future property taxes. And, and not, the before you start looking at how it's repaid, you take out all of the current taxes that you're earning off of it, it and an additional 10%, which goes to the city as well. So the starting point is the increment of, a, of future taxes that are paid because of the new project, okay? So that's how it's repaid. So you, but the crazy thing about TIF is you can have a note amount for a million dollars, and you may only earn 300,000 of that, through the repayment because the TIF district will expire before uh, the note is fully repaid. So, and we're working on an application. We're, we're identifying within that application, you know, the risks we're willing to take. Um, but it's, it's kind of a mutual, we set a number and then, then we see what happens with the future taxes because I don't control that, you don't control that. The, the taxes will be set by the assessor. So, but going back, I mean, I, I think that's important information for you to ponder as you think about this. Um, but essentially, if, if I were to boil it down to a number, I would look at it this way. We're, I look at it that we're probably overpaying about $400,000 for the site. The purchase price is seven seventy-five, dollars And the building has an assessed value of $440,000. Um, so, in, in my opinion, that property, based on comparable sales, is probably worth three to four hundred thousand uh, dollars. So, that that would be a number that we'd be looking for. The demolition, which is, you know, we don't have any firm bids on that yet, but that's probably fifty grand for a rough number. And then the cost to work with our council and your council to put it together. So, so that would be the amount that would be potentially certified to the TIF note. Now, how much of that do we actually collect? That depends on the term of the TIF note, the interest rate associated with the TIF note, the increment uh, the, the, of the taxes, the property taxes which are created. 
And, and the challenge is, is of course, having some of these details to have that understanding. Um, I'll offer that uh, the, the maximum term for a redevelopment district is 25 years, 25 years. We haven't talked at all about really specifics for that term, but that would be the maximum. And whether we land there or somewhere in the middle is part of the piece to all of these different pieces as far as what would come back in, in taxable value and the interest rate and all those things. So, the, <coughs> the public hearing that you mentioned here on the 18th, that's also a regular council night, correct? So would there be, uh, we'd be there would be a request to take some sort of action at that point? Correct. Okay. So we would have, we would, we'd have it narrowed down by then. That, that would be oh, yes. the point of the, whole, of the public hearing. Yes, okay. yes. I expect we would really have more details in the next month for sure to maybe mm -hmm. bring back to the council for an update. Uh, we can work through some of that outside of a formal public hearing piece? You know, kind of cutting to the quick. I, I would say, because I think, I mean, I think I'm sensing that maybe it's real important to get a, even though I don't think we're to the point where we can really qualify or quantify the numbers, we probably will not do this project if we can't get a TIF note in the area of $500,000. Now, that sounds like a lot of money, but, uh, Again, you, you know, you go back to where is that money being created from, okay? It's being created from the increment on the additional value of the property. So it's taking nothing away from what currently exists. And so from, you know, I guess the point I want to make here is I think, I think the question is do you want to redevelop that property? Do you want to see it redeveloped? Because I can tell you after dealing with the, with the seller, it's going to sit there for quite a while longer if the city is not the city or somebody who's got a lot of money who doesn't care about rate of returns and things that most of us have to deal with uh, is willing to come in there and develop it. So, yeah, you know, outside of you know, out, I mean, just taking Sportland and UPAD out of the discussion, and as I think about it. You know, um, as a small business person, you know, I go, there's a part of me that says, yeah, you know, certainly we'd like to see that corner redeveloped, you know. And, you know, and I do have certainly, a, you know, as a councilman, as mayor, I have some interest in that. There's another part of me that, you know, kind of goes, well, if I was going to go look to buy a chunk of land on the highway and, um, you know, they wanted X number of dollars for it, but I didn't want to pay that much. Should I go see if I can get TIF money so I don't have to pay as much for it? And, you know, there's that because it can kind of come down to if you do it for one person and you help, you know, I mean, wherever it is in Niswa, um, the next person that comes in and asks for TIF to help save money on the purchase of a piece of property, I kind of go, geez, I don't know if that's fair, you know. So that's that's what I have to wrestle with. I mean, I'll just, you know, just, just to share what's in my head with you, that's that's what I would that what no, I have to I wrestle with. I get it, about. I get it. I, I mean, I've been involved in a lot of transactions that have involved TIF financing. And, it, it you know, when you, so the very, the very fundamental question with TIF is but for. So, it, and, and that's really a question that you all need to think about and answer. And the, the but for question is, but for the TIF, would the development happen? And right. I think in this case, it's pretty clear. I mean, it's been there 10 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, quite frankly, I'll tell you candidly, we won't go for We will go forward with a bank in Niswa, but we will not do it on this site unless the TIF is involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... And so I think, I mean, that's where, where, where it gets a little tricky with the TIF is the, the idea that it's a subsidy. It's not a subsidy. It, mm -hmm. it comes off of the increment of the additional taxes. Um, so it, it's one of those things that should only be used when, but for the TIF, you want to go forward with the development of a assisted living facility, or but for the TIF, you want to go forward and redevelop Sportland Corner. 
Um, so, you know, that, that's really the issue. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, that's your decision. I mean, and I completely respect that. What I'm hoping for is to be able to move forward one way or the other with some clarity about are you in support of that? Yeah, it's. I mean, it, it's a. It is a difficult um, scenario for somebody who would like to purchase that piece of property. I mean, well, we it, had. It, it might be fair to say that you know, that's a. The person who owns it is has high expectations or possibly a little unreasonable. Um, but I get into the. But I get into the. Well, is it? Is that the city's position to? To deal with, um, and the, so, and that that's th so. Those are my thoughts. I'll just open it up to whoever else, and then we'll move forward. Well, I I, I, I certainly see that this could be a, an opportunity to take care of an eyesore, and if it if it means uh, going this tip route, I mean, obviously, she is not a motivated seller. And as Patrick says, it's it's going to take somebody that just doesn't care to come in there and buy it. Otherwise, it will continue to deteriorate, and it will continue to be an eyesore at the entrance to our city. So I, for one, do think we it, it could it could kill a couple of birds with one stone. And, and TIF money, to me, seems like they're, they would, it seems like it would be a very good and wise use for TIF financing, in my opinion. So I, I, I don't see any problem with setting a hearing and further examining it and getting more numbers and going from there. I guess I, A, don't have, I mean, the numbers are crucial without, you know, um, but I definitely think it's an appropriate use of TIF money. Um, if, you know, and I don't think every one of these projects stand on its own and I don't know if we can fairly say well if we do it for this we do it for everybody that's not because that's not been fair on the other side of that for you who's asking for this if we make the decision we make the decision these are the reasons at least for me myself these are the reasons why I'm making it and I'll look anybody in the eye and tell them this is why I, I did that um, and I don't believe by going forward tonight that we're locked into this either if, if these numbers come back and you know stuff Again, as long as you know, PJ, I can look you in the face and say this is why I've changed. You know, why I've decided where I did. And I understand the money. I don't want you guys to waste your money any more than you want to waste your money. So I'm taking it serious. And I'm, but it, it's so hard to TIF is hard to understand to begin with, and without actually having the numbers and seeing how it works and seeing how, um, you know, it, it's it's just impossible to make decisions. So I'm absolutely in favor of going down this road and. And seeing and hopeful and, and I'm hopeful that we can come to terms on something that's reasonable and and um, and we can put something there. So that's my opinion on it. I have to echo what Ross said. I mean, get a, get the ball rolling, but get the numbers. So it's got to be a good deal for us, or but we won't know that unless we get the ball rolling. So. Okay. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we. Uh, that we move forward with the resolution um, uh, calling a public hearing on a proposal establishment of tax increment financing district number 1-13 within the development district number one and the proposed adoption of a tax increment financing plan relating thereto as presented. I'll second. Second by Johnson. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Look thank forward to hearing for, more. Thank you for your consideration. We look forward to being part of the Nisswa community. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. The one other follow-up piece I have to that is the memo um, that I have in your packet regarding the application fee. Um, we don't have a standard TIF application fee so I did a poll of various cities and I liked this um, approach which would be um, the city's application fee would be a thousand dollars and then we would require American National Bank to deposit five thousand dollars into an escrow account 
to use to offset our consulting costs um, at this time. And they would pay the balance due at the end, or we'd refund them if we don't spend the, the money. Right. But Should I, do you want that in a new motion? Please, if you authorize those fees, that would be great. I'll make a motion that we um, set up the fees for this, for the initiation of this, the approval to set the TIF application fee to a non-refundable $1,000 plus an escrow deposit of 5,000 to be used for any out-of-pocket expense incurred by the city as proposed in this memo dated May 16th, 2018. Second. Um, Pat's still here? No, nope, he left. Well, I'm assuming he's in agreement with this? He is, yes. He, ha he has a, a employee event thing to, to attend tonight, but yes, I did discuss it with him and he was fine. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Wonderful. And then item C, did you have anything? Is that? That's just the initial that, memo yeah. that he presented yeah. for your okay. information. And we have that, so thank you. Okay. Um, next on the under new business is item E2. Presentation from the City of Nisswa Fire Chief regarding purchase of a pumper truck for the fire department. Sean? Good evening. Thanks for taking time of your evening with me. I'd like to present our new fire truck, potential new fire truck, to you guys. I've reached out to everybody of the council. Um, you guys have called with some questions. If you had questions, you called. If you didn't, you didn't call. Um, where we're at, we're looking at a fire truck. If you in your packet, you have a picture of the truck. Uh, the truck is going to cost four hundred and sixty-six thousand one hundred and thirty-three dollars. Um, how we're going to pay for it, I've laid that out on this. How we're going to pay for this pumper? Um, what I'm proposing for is five hundred and ten thousand two hundred thirty-three dollars. Our down payment would be two sixty-three one thirty-three to custom fire fire trucks. There, our loan amount would be two hundred three thousand. And then the equipment for the truck from the the sinking fund, our truck fund that we have set up, will be thirty six eight sixty seven, and then from our fundraising account will be seventy two thirty two. That's how we come to that five ten amount. Uh, we've done a payback option here. Um, fun. If you can look at that, we're in the seven year. We want to do the seven year deal. Our payments will total two thirty five six fifty one. At the end of ten years, we're going to have three hundred fourteen thousand in that account. How that works is our truck fund has, we put $55,000 a year into our truck fund at this point. When I took over as chief, that was only $45,000. Um, two years prior to that, when I was assistant chief, it was $35,000. So we've sort of made a standing deal every couple of years. We revisit this truck fund because when we bought our last truck 15 years ago, it was two seventy-five. dollars Now we're finding for the exact same truck, we're at four sixty-six. So things are changing. So we're trying to speed up our truck fund to match the times. So I'm hoping in 10 years, I have this $85,000 a year number in my head, and I think I can get there in 10 years with our contracted areas. So that's that's my repayment plan. Um, right now we have 307,000 in our sinking fund. I'm gonna use 300 of that towards this, this venture, and the rest will be paid from us. I guess I'll just open it up if you guys have any questions before we go any further. Well, just for clarification for for the records and the and the audience, Sean, you know, you had mentioned four hundred sixty six thousand for the truck, and then you mentioned five ten for the total. The difference in there is just for the public and for and for the record. That is for equipment equipment ex to go on the truck. Yes. So that's where the truck's four sixty six. The equipment that's needed for the truck is forty four thousand one hundred. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And then so the total then becomes five hundred ten thousand. Yeah. And then of that five hundred and ten, about we're going to borrow two. We're going to borrow two hundred three thousand. Yeah, three hundred thousand is in is in the, in an account right now yes. for that truck. Yeah. and then you borrow the the rest. The, the rest. The two. We're only going to borrow two hundred three. The rest yeah. we have. So, and it's then so we're going to do that through a leasing program. With a, at the end of our lease at seven years, we'll have a one dollar buyout. Yeah, so I the, read through that. The two hundred three that you're financing. So the, the repayment on that loan, is that built into your, um, into your payback options here and, and, and also 
building up the sinking fund again? Yes. Hang on. I've got yeah, Well, Jenny was shaking her head yes, too, okay. so. Okay. <laughs> Here, I'll just hand it to you. And it's on this page, it says community leasing partners. The seven year option shows the payment, which is 40, oh, 33,000 and some change. So the difference would go into the fund to keep building that up over the next 10 years while we're making the payments on the truck. So Mr. Johnson, that paper I see how he does the 55 plus minus the payment is what yeah. I would have left yeah. and in 10 it. years. Yeah. That was, yeah. You see that? Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty first okay. already. Yeah. Sean, I just thought of something. The sure. forty-four thousand. Does that include air packs? No, we have plenty of air packs. You got plenty time. of air packs yes. to to, yeah, okay. to make this work. Okay. And the the idea of this is, I don't know. I'll explain how our system works. Right now, we have a forty-four-year-old truck that supplies water to our hydrant system in the city of Nisswa. So when you get a fire downtown, we take a truck over to the Nisswa Lake. We plug into a suction pipe per se and we hook into a hydrant and we, we push water with that truck up town our truck is 44 years old you can't get parts for it anymore uh, it's got a blown head gasket and when you start pumping water with it in about 45 minutes it overheats it's a problem so my answer to it is we take our 24 year old truck that currently sits in Lake Edwards Township and move it into that 44 year old truck hole take our 15 year old truck move it to Lake Edwards and then put a new truck in its place. So we're really getting rid of one pumper out of town, that old 44-year-old truck. <clears throat> so that's that's my thinking on this whole fire truck deal. Um, I have explored used options just to see what was out there. We found a 2015. It's not the truck we spec'd um, to get it close to what we need to do. It came in at 399000 We had a $23,000 light bar plus 6000 roughly between five and 6,000 to install it. So, you know, our numbers, it just doesn't come around. We did find a demo truck um, that's fairly close to what we wanted. Uh, when we get said and done, it looks like you're gonna be about 455. So, you know, to get what we want, we're only talking another $11,000. So, I mean, to me, it just makes business sense to go forward with what we've spec'd, what we'd like. Um, it's a truck just like we have today. So training will be minimal. I mean, there's always training on all trucks. We, we train all the time. So if you really figure in the $11,000 with a different truck, you know, at least 10 nights of training, which costs me about $330 a night of training, you know, you add another 3,300 on it, which we train all the time anyway. But, you know, see, it just chisels at 11,000 away. So it just gets back to where it makes sense. And that's where I'm at. And I'm just looking to you guys do we go forward? Don't we go forward? I would wish that we could go forward and, and move on. Sean, I know it's kind of, I asked late, but did you get a chance to check and see how financing changes? <clears throat> yes, I did. I couldn't get anything in writing. Truck? If I go used, if instead of going 3.87, I think that says, we go anywhere from 5.95 to 6.5%. Okay. They would only give me a verbal over the phone on a 10-year note. So it jumps up quite a bit. And then we're losing warranty. I just it does. I don't think it makes business sense to buy a used truck. Yeah, it'd be one thing if it was a forty percent price difference or something yeah. like that. But but it's just it's not there. But that is very close. Yeah. <clears throat> and I did I did have conversation with Sean about it, and he kind of went through all this, so I'm pretty familiar with it and comfortable. The other thing you kind of have to realize is, so by the time we're done now with. 18 that's moving over to replace the Persh, which is the 44 year old truck by the time we're done with that that's going to be a 40 year old truck mm -hmm. and and you know and, and we know what we got we take good care of it but the other thing and fire departments do is they try to stay with the same vendor we've we've gotten one truck from custom we've been very happy with it our service from them our previous truck we bought that company went out of business 3d went out of business like a year after we got it it so was quick. we had to have panels custom made we had to so but you'll see fire departments pretty pretty common for them to stay with one company everyone's familiar with it and like i said we've 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 gotten absolutely really great service out of the the family's actually the family that owns custom actually has been building fire trucks for three i think the, 
well, 40 years. Is this is their 40th year. They started out with general, which Brainerd used general. We used general for years. And so it's just, just factor that in there too, that it's, 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 it's a good company and it takes care of us. Any more questions? Entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we move forward um, with uh, purchasing a new fire truck from um, I'll take a custom of general <laughs> custom <laughs> fire uh, as the fire department has presented here tonight with the numbers that they presented here tonight going with the seven year payment option as as presented I'll second any discussion on the motion Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very so much. The fire department appreciates it. Good job. So in nine Thanks, months, guys. nine good. months, we'll come present it to you. Joe, good, just uh, good presentation. Oh. Yes, very nice. Yeah. Okay. All Hold your on. paperwork too was good. Yeah. Keep his feet on the ground. It's gonna, you know, it takes eight nine months. So. <laughs> <laughs> Next on the, under new business, item E3, 2018-19 liquor license renewals. Um, we have a sheet that lists all of the um, applicants and or current li current holders. And is there any? Correct. Are there any new? But everybody's no. got their paperwork in and, yes. and ready yes. to go, so to speak. So. So, on a. I'm sorry. You were you gonna? Well, I was just gonna say paperwork and fees. Um, have okay, been a, taken care of yeah. do we do we run new background checks or anything on a renewal or is that only on a new application? yep it's only on a new um, okay. unless there's a, a violation or something that occurs mid-year then yeah. we address that at that time as well and we haven't had any issues nope. with any of these nope okay I would uh, well I guess Make I should motion. just jump right into it anybody else have questions no I, I'm pretty so read through it yeah okay I would move to approve the 2018-19 liquor license renewals as presented in our packet. Second. Second by Ryan. Any further? Any discussion on the motion? Since Don isn't here, I'll ask. They have all the insurance requirements and everything that have to go up. Yes. You have cop. Okay. Yes. Make them feel good. Don't be proud. <laughs> all, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Item E4 set election judge pay rate for 2018. We had information in our packet. It's recommended that we go from $9.50 an hour to $10.50 an hour. And um, we do not. We are not in need of a second judge. Is that what it is, or, or what role would you take there, Jenny? That would great question. Yes. Yeah. So I will be the head judge for the election. So I will manage all the correspondence with the county and getting the results um, back and forth for the primary and general elections. But we do have to have um, some around six judges here to help with all of the different processing that happens for the election, um, and so to. As it is difficult to find judges, and we'd like to make it, you know, as worth their while as we can. Um, I'd like to just do an increase. It's been a couple elections since we've done that, um, to the best I could tell from the files, and um, this still maintains within our budget, um, but would give them a little extra for helping helping out the city. Okay, I'll make a motion for ready. Go right ahead. I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, the 2018 election judge pay rate at ten dollars and fifty cents an hour as presented second second by Johnson any discussion on the motion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. 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 opposed motion carries flip the page to page two e5 recommendation to accept a quote from Revise LLC for website hosting, design, and maintenance. Would like we to give you a little background or just some inter information? Uh, I, I guess I don't know how we did. Just is maybe we should just open it up for questions? And I mean, all the all the information was there, so okay. uh, yeah. that was pretty straightforward. Yeah. You know, the one question I had, and I mean, obviously, I think it was taken into account, but 
revises, uh, and in this day and age, distance isn't necessarily a big thing, but I believe they're from Michigan. Yes. And um, there's two local firms. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just... Thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, we yep. gave due consideration to that and so on. We did, absolutely. Um, trying to look at all of the different criteria and how you compare. Um, everyone's a little bit different. Um, we felt that the, the individuals, a couple staff members and a couple council members I reached out to <coughs> felt that it was important to have those systems in place from a, from a larger, slightly larger company. Um, we've had some challenges in the past with smaller operations. And although I think that the proposals we received from the two um, local um, vendors um, were very good, and I certainly um, don't know that we don't think we'd have any you know, issues. This was, this was the consensus from, from the group that I kind of got feedback from. Um, I think they do a great job, but certainly willing to discuss if, if the council wants me to look at it any differently. Did we um, did we do a kind of a background check referrals from from client from uh, ex existing past clients with this company? Because I mean, obviously, the reason we're looking for a website a firm to work with on our website is we've not had the best of luck with the with our most recent. Sure. So sure. I mean, I think my, just a question that I would have is in a consideration is just that we would do a talk to you know a handful a follow of up. people who've been maybe been with them a few years that have been that know the the experience or that have an experience with them that could sure. help make sure that we're making a good selection that's only those are my only thoughts about it sure council could we make a motion contingent upon that you can make a motion however you would like uh, okay, I'll, I'll move to approve the bid from Revise LLC for web hosting and prices quoted within the packet, contingent upon maybe some due diligence on some, some current customers just to make sure the experience has been okay. I'll second. Discussion on the motion? The only thing I have... It may sound silly, but you, know, you you feel comfortable that we've expressed to them our needs and our wants and what we're looking for and where we want to go. I mean, obviously, this has been a bit of an issue, but you feel comfortable that we've at least expressed to them what we're our end product, what we want. And I do, and I, I think that they have an understanding based on some of the other Minnesota work they've done. Um, just as far as translation between our city and, and other similar cities, um, I think that they'll they'll help work through all those details very very well. And my only other question is because uh, I kind of like the thirty seven hundred a year payment deal. Yeah. If we're not yeah. happy with them, we can we can we can go separate uh, ways. I think so. Yeah, I can confirm yeah, that. Yeah, I know though. it's contracts and lawyers and stuff. Right. But, right. But yeah. Okay. That's all I got. So then, kind of along the same line of where I was, um, Jenny, did uh, have you or whoever has been involved with this um, search? Have you have you gone to some of the websites that re that Revise has done and looked through them and gone, wow, you know, or or this is what really what we're looking for? Yes, I I went through a few of them that they listed um, from other Minnesota cities, and they're they're very sharp looking. They're very easy to use, um, creative. They'll they'll work with us to to make sure that we've got the most important things addressed for for us and and for our needs. But I'll certainly make sure to reach out to some of those cities um, and get their feedback and make sure that I don't see any red flags before I officially move forward with that. Sure. Yeah, and if you could, when you reach out to those cities, if you could try to find their quote unquote web person mm -hmm. so you could have some direct talk with them maybe not just say a city administrator if they're not involved with it or something like that but really sure because yeah we would I know everyone here would really like to see the city have a nice website functional website yep. easy to use website and obviously it's been a right now we've had a few years struggle to make any progress there so yep absolutely and I think you're well aware of that. So you know, I think we're all just, we all just want to make sure that we're 
that we're we going to get right. something get that, done. that the citizens <laughs> well. will be happy with. Yeah. Sure. I think the only problem I have, or the only question I have, is the the systems that they use. Jenny, mm -hmm. talk to me a little mm -hmm. bit about that. It's not a stand. Do you want to explain that? Because you understood it better than I did. But it's not the same word base. They don't use they don't use a WordPress system. They actually have their own, um, and I was planning on demoing that as well um, to make sure that the ease and the functionality is not that anyone would really have that much familiarity with WordPress right off the bat. So it's a learning curve regardless um, of of what we use. But um, checking with those other cities as well to say how intuitive is it and easy to use, so that you can kind of pick it up and and run with it to make those easy changes and and that kind of thing. So. Uh, that, that is a difference between um, Revise and, and some of the others, but they've obviously created something that seems to work well. So I'll definitely, I'll definitely check that out before we, before we finalize, make sure that that feels, feels right for us. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. E6, approval to enter into discussions with the DNR for potential road easement. And um, Desmond, you going to bring us up to speed on that? Thank you. Um, I will do my best. It's a kind of a convoluted history, um, but uh, yes, we are here to ask for uh, permission or a request to, um, uh, authorization to proceed forward with discussing uh, procuring a roadway easement with uh, DNR. Um, the subject request stems from um, a current application or a pre-application we have, if you will, uh, for a project that is located south of Poplar Avenue and north of Hills Crossing. Uh, it's 13 acres and the uh, proposed uh, the potential developer is uh, Mr. Thomas Steffens. Uh, and essentially um, what he is looking to do is part part of this application uh, and future development application should he decide to move forward is he will have to provide a street connection to Hills Crossing in some manner uh, along you know on the south side of the property because it's far too large to serve with just one um, roadway to the north to Poplar Avenue so um, with that um, you know back in 2000 I think it was probably 7 2008 there was a conditional use permit for the Hills Crossing um, development to the south of it and as um, uh, and in that there was a condition of approval uh, that stated that the, the applicant should provide a roadway easement um, to uh, allow for access essentially from that property to the north um, for whatever reason a roadway easement was never you know secured and, and recorded um, and later on there was a, a, a subsequent conditional use permit for the property um, in 2011 I believe it was um, and with that <coughs> pardon me um, with that there wasn't any reference to the previous uh, approval or the roadway that hadn't yet been uh, secured um, so uh, basically what we are asking for is to essentially enter into agreements because at this time we don't actually have an application at hand where we could charge an applicant um, I guess w what our thinking is that uh, if council agrees to, to allow us to move forward and uh, talk with the DNR about securing an access to to Hills Crossing through another portion of that Paul Bunyan Trail um, that uh, the applicant uh, or, or the developer uh, put as money in escrow um, so that we could uh, pull application fees and uh, attorney fees we probably have to have the uh, easements drawn up and looked at by engineering um, so um, now um, uh, of course I think from a design perspective it would be much more desirable to have it come straight south uh, into the uh, Hills Crossing development um, although um, rather than uh, the, the easement that is being suggested because it comes in at a 45 degree angle um, but that said uh, Mr. Steffens is trying to look at his various options and trying to secure his access to the south um, should he move forward with this project so uh, I guess that's 
Okay. Um, okay. Trying, trying to bring you up to speed, but if you, I'm sure you have additional questions, uh, feel free to fire away. Well, you know, um, a question that I that comes to, or a thought that comes to my mind is, um, and maybe I'll premise it by saying I'm I, I'm not at all opposed to this development potential. Um, um, how, uh, roughly, how many homes or might possibly go in there, Desmond? Is there there was kind of a drawing, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, there Yes, there was. Um, uh, the last, the last sketch plan review, Mr. Uh, Stephens was proposing 38 units overall okay. through a planned unit development. Sure. So, so my one concern with the development, um, I'm generally in favor of it, but my one concern would be um, 38 new traffic or new vehicles entering out and probably most of them would come out by Hills Crossing mm -hmm. and going so every every morning there would be a good number of vehicles coming out going through downtown Minnesota, or Minnesota Nisswa and um, and at potentially adding to traffic issues yeah. so I think that that would be something that should really be taken a strong look at and to help mitigate that um, and figure out what maybe the you know if there's a better option or what the options are mm -hmm. um, because that it's a significant number um, and uh, but I think that you know I think that can be worked out mitigated and taken care of but that would be my one comment about it is just so we look at uh, additional traffic load in downtown Niswa. Council. So at this point, you just need approval to enter into, into discussions with the DNR. Correct. If uh, Mr. Steffens uh, looks to proceed in this manner, uh, then we would. Um, DNR has informed him that uh, the city would need to be the applicant in this situation and and not not a private developer. So um, we would just begin that discussion with them about what what all is involved with uh, securing that easement and expanding that exist the existing easement that's there. So if, he, if Mr. Steffens ends up not developing it, his plan falls through, are we still going to be reimbursed for, by him? Or was he, is that going to just be our dime? How are we? Um, I, I think the, the notion is that we, they, we would have Mr. Steffens put money into an escrow account that, that he would be paying the, all the uh, attorney fees, um, engineering fees, and also application fees. Um, so, so if he decided not to proceed forward, you know, I guess we would just, you know, he'd be able to, with, you know, take his, withdraw his money from the escrow account at that point. Receive whatever's left yeah. over. Um, it sounds like the DNR fee is two thousand dollars. That's correct. Right off the bat, so we're probably in the five thousand dollar range for an escrow. That was my question. Is Payment? how much we're going to escrow? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, you might want to give some consideration to that and just add up some preliminary numbers and come up sure. with them number if it's five thousand seven thousand two thousand ten thousand whatever it is and so is he does he actually own the property now it's his or I thought that is that not my understanding yeah, he has it under contract at this time yeah. and I did believe he was going to come to present his case tonight but I, I didn't don't, okay. don't see him in the audience tonight okay. Um, I believe so. I think we, we have a fairly good idea of what the cost would be associated with it. I think that would make sense um, if, if you agree, Tom, that if, if the council wants to approve moving forward with the DNR, we'd also say to include that, that escrow payment um, before we would proceed. Yes, yes. No, no conversation with DNR contingent on that money be, being deposited in the escrow, right. subject to an escrow agreement, right? But, so mm -hmm. Well, the uh, the application is two thousand, um, and then we have engineering fees, and of course, we'd probably need your input with regard to any legal fees um, that would be associated with review of an easement um, and looking at that uh, that document and that language. Can you write into these agreements, though? I mean, if we say it's five and we spend five, then we ask for more. I mean, 
I'm assuming we can kind of keep tabs on where we're at and if we're getting close to that five then we say hey another three can I mean can that be kind of written into there that you know it's contingent upon how much you're spending so you don't over you can't overspend what you have in escrow yeah it, Ross is a good idea but it's tough once you get going to that point where it needs to be replenished so if that's if we're concerned about that it's much easier to take more as a deposit and then be able to refund it than it is to stop midstream and talk about replenishing okay that answers that <coughs> question so would we be you know would would it be fair and and prudent to say 7500 or do you think because when you start talking engineering fees and lawyer fees, I'm, I'm in a $2,000, that only leaving us 3000 I believe the engineering fees, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Howland, it, it would be the review of any kind of legal description that was uh, provided for for the easement. Um, we wouldn't be looking at engineering drawings that, you know, preliminarily with this, would we? No, I guess it's, it's top prepared the actual Mm -hmm. you know, that, that, you know, whoever does it, Stonemeyer, anybody that fifteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So, but if you think didn't provide that, and yep. we just review it. Right. You know, we will review it for less than five hundred dollars. Right. Okay. And do that? Does that side so gets billed through the city? That doesn't get billed directly to to Mr. Stephens, I guess. Normally, yes. That that <laughs> fee would be billed to the city directly the city. from. So maybe we should consider seventy-five hundred. Well, I was just going to—I was just going to say—it seems like five would cover it, but maybe not. Well, we're at thirty-five hundred. First two items. The first two items potentially. No yeah. But then didn't, wasn't Mark just saying he? If he provided to that, to provide the legal. If he provided it, it, it for five hundred bucks. Let's just do six. It'll give us an extra thousand. Six thousand. Whoever makes a motion can pick the number. I'll make a motion that we proceed forward uh, with approval to enter into discussions with the development of natural resources for potential easement um, as presented. And I would um, make that contingent upon a $6,000 uh, $6, put into escrow prior to any work moving forward um, and any discussions. A second discussion. Do, do we want to add in there that he provides the legal description? Okay, I think we're because it's fifteen hundred if he doesn't. So I think we're covered. Okay, I think we're covered either way. Okay. And then Tom, would you be putting a document together for this then? Sure would. So yeah. part of our motion would be then that this information that's in the motion would taken by the city attorney and drafted into a document and an agreement okay does that sound good to everybody to be paid for out of the escrow right? to be yep to be paid for out of escrow or that's my understanding of what i heard anyway mm -hmm. okay all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries e7 Next on the agenda, recommendation from the Public Works Committee regarding purchase of a sewer truck. Who's yes. going to take that? I will. Um, the, uh, the, the truck you're looking at here, um, the Ford truck you're looking at, this is not a state bid truck. Okay. And the reason for that is Ford and Ram are the only two that are bidding this size truck, and they're done for the year the state bid has to wait to get a rebid it could be a month from now it could be a few months from now there's a there's a substantial time drag by the time you put in the order for this truck to the time that you get it because they got to they may have to build the truck or get it here and then it has to be upfitted with the equipment and everything um, a couple things that staff has done on this truck um, in the last truck, they tried, um, they went with a built-in um, air compressor. It, it's been giving them headaches the whole time. So they decided not to do that. They have a better option in mind. They can handle that. Um, they're also reusing um, a, uh, 
they eliminated the diesel engine um, again and then they also um, they're reusing the power inverter inside it was um, they mounted it inside it's in good shape they can reuse it saves an additional four grand there was a question that was broached about rebuilding the existing crane and using it. Um, the crane has given them, and Mike, stop me if I'm wrong, the crane has been a problem, and the, the manufacturer that builds the crane, it's not just us, it's multiple communities that have been having problems, and they've gone to a better system that they've been very happy with, and so pretty much most of the utilities of the crane this size and the arm have gone to this brand that that they're quoting here so um, the truck is still even it, it's still under budget um, but it's also um, as far as state bid goes by buying it from Mills Motors in the past they have always well I shouldn't say always but they have generally met or beaten state bid anyway so the thought was why wait for who knows when the new state bid list will come out when we're pretty certain that they're gonna beat the price anyway how did this price compare to the state bid for 2018 it was under this was mm -hmm. okay yep this was under um, so and the trade um, we've been kicking around the idea of trading them or selling them straight out um, sometimes you can make a little better money if you sell them straight out. This one, um, from what Mike has told us, I mean, it's so close. I mean, the trade in they're giving on this is really good. And you, you might, I, I mean, for what you might make additional would probably be eaten up in staff time. Because as you can see where the price of the truck is, at, you know, they might as well you know a lot of places can find it. so and this is based on um, going to dealers that actually deal in the used truck of this type and this is the price that this is about what that truck would fetch anyway so we're looking at trading it in it's quicker faster easier and we don't have a lot of the mess and the hassle of trying to do closed bids and sealed bids and waiting and hoping the check clears and everything else um, so the the board it's it's a good truck it's a good um, it's it's going to meet the the um, the uh, the needs of the department and this is a 10-year purchase so so I you know I would make a motion that we accept the um, the bid as presented for the sewer truck um, and get it purchased right now if we if we move today we're probably looking at a November November ish um, delivery date did you make a motion yes so I'm gonna make the motion that we accept the bid for uh, Mills Motors to purchase the sewer truck as presented by staff I'll second I do have a question though since there is no state bid can we do we have to have other bids no, it's under, the, it's under the, the threshold. Said you could do it if you, Congrats, if there so. is a state bid. It's under the threshold, so the dollar amount is oh, fine. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. I just popped in my head when you said there is no state bid, and I just. Good question. There's not a current one. No, I get, I get what you I just want to make sure we were. In fact, if you look at the state bid website and you look at the state bid, um, at who's got them, and you look at what the dates are on the bid. According to what the website says, it should still be available for that price, but they're not. And that was from MnDOT. Said that uh, there was a couple places we talked. Well, Mike's Mike's Motors, who had has the Ford bid, said they can't even bid them out anymore. So, and then uh, MnDOT, uh, the uh, ah, the, what, the uh, motor pool folks from MnDOT same thing so I, I'm gonna guess that maybe their line is low. sorry so all those in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries item e8 recommendation for public works committee re from public works committee regarding the purchase of a supervisor truck 
Okay, on this one here, this is uh, replacing the current truck that Tom is driving, um, the red Ford. Uh, that, we're looking at replacing it. Um, we have two bids. Um, the one is state bid. Uh, we actually have three bids. Um, we have a state bid for the Ram pickup. We have a state bid for the Ford. And then we have a bid from Mills Motors. Um, Mills Motors, once again, did beat that, um, beat the state bid um, as well. Um, the Ram is is four thousand dollars less. Um, the the committee looked at the four thousand dollar number, and it was decided we, if we keep our money local, and we also instead of having one Ram or Dodge, and everything else is Ford, we're consistent with an all Ford fleet. We have a great dealership down here that we can work with and others in the area and that was a decision that we had ultimately decided to make um, there are a couple of items on the quote we just that's why we decided to go with the Mills quote there are a couple of items on the quote that um, and the every dealership was given the exact same uh, items to bid it out so it was an apples to apples comparison a um, couple things that um, we're going to look at yet or we wanted to get a question that I, I've had questions asked me on is the box side steps um, tailgate step do I mean do we need those since we're going to have a topper on this we wanted to go with a topper this time staff did wanted to go with a topper um, to protect things that are inside the, the box to um, protect tools and that and also have a slide out um, that would allow the operator to pull the slide out to get the tools and pick them up here as opposed to crawling in and reaching and bending and etc um, our insurance carrier um, Jenny had contacted our insurance carrier League of Minnesota Cities um, their take is anything you can do that can help prevent injuries. Um, it's cheaper and do it that way as opposed to, you know, the work comp issues and things of that, of that. And she can, Jenny can explain that more. The one thing that we are looking at in here is why do we, do we need the spray and liner? Um, do we need the box side steps and the tailgate steps since we're going to have a topper on it and we're going to reach in? These are things that can be taken off if the council so decides um, and when it's ordered. But everything was ordered. Every bid was bid out with the same specs. So um, that's what we were, at the, and that's the one we were looking at there. This truck, um, when I talked to Crow and County about trucks of this nature, they were coming their trucks were coming in at around third about 28 to 30,000 31,000 depending on um, if it needed a certain amenity for whoever it was that used it for them um, so this truck is going to be coming in at um, this there's you'll see the topper it's built-in storage tool storage in the top of the cargo slide um, it's a crew cab and it is a um, doo -doo -doo. where was it? I was looking at it here. It's the crew cab, and it has the. Uh, um, you'll see a chrome package on there. Basically, um, it's chrome tires uh, or chrome wheels, if you will. Um, it's not a. There's not chrome all around on the vehicle and everything else. It's just a, a chrome wheel for. Um, for rust prevention and stuff um, helps with the rust and, and etc um, the question was again if the topper we wanted to give it a shot the slide out we wanted to give it a shot the question was why do we have why do we need a, a, a spray liner if we have the topper and the slide out so um, what we were thinking there and as far as the the um, uh, steps I'll be honest with you I didn't, I didn't think about that but we bid it out that way but Tom if 
correct me if I'm mistaken, but if we need something dropped off of here, it can be dropped off when the order is placed, right? The spray and bed liner, at least on the RAM, is standard. Right. So you really can't drop it out, I guess. On the RAM. On the, on the Ford. On the Ford, you could. I wouldn't recommend it. The Ford's <clears throat> an aluminum body. That's one of the reasons we went with the Ford was we were hoping they would avoid some of the corrosion problems we've had with the current truck. Um, but the aluminum is also softer, dense, easier. We're hoping that the uh, spray and bed liner will give that a little bit more um, stamina for things that are dropped in it or put in it. Okay, and I didn't think of this at the time when we were discussing it at our public works meeting either. If we have that slide out in there, that's eight, that's the whole length of the box, right? Yes. And it slides out. So do we need the spray and liner if we have that? Well, it, it goes up the sides as well. So okay. I don't know if need is necessarily the right word, but it, it, I think, you know, this is, okay. for me personally, this is at least three or four trucks I've had spray and bed liner, and I feel it's well worth it. The, the box doesn't get beat up. It's, uh, you know, it just makes it structurally a lot more sound than without it. It's not a okay. big expense. Tom, your topper is going to have doors that open up, and you're gonna, it's going to have built-in toolboxes. Right. What I was hoping to do there is right now, if you've seen my truck, you know, I've got the toolbox along the back. And you got to stand up on the tire to get anything out of it. Well, this brings it out on the side so it's more at arm level. So you can see, one, you can see what's in it. Mm -hmm. and two, you can grab it without having to climb on anything. And I guess, you know, because I was, like, the box side steps, I think, with a topper will be kind of worthless. Um, unless I mean because you're reaching in eye level unless you're putting stuff up on top of the topper um, yeah. and then same with the step you're going to be walking up and into the topper um, and I would normally 100% agree with you on a spray in bed liner but in this case with the with the rollout liner or with the rollout box and then with your toolbox is kind of above the sides um, I I'm just not wondering if we can take a thousand dollars off here with stuff that unless you can tell me that you know the, the the steps the box side steps and the tailgate step would be of a benefit and potentially save us from you know for safety or whatever but that's kind of my take on them two items well I think the tailgate step you you should probably leave on there because even with the slide out there's a potential you will go in with the truck for whatever reason but uh, I can agree with you on the box side step um, we had spec that before we put the topper on it so right. okay I guess it probably was an oversight to but not with the it. topper and the step on the back I mean you know the steps nice if you can step up and, and you know walk into the truck but you're actually kind of obviously if you're gonna go in the truck number one you have the slide out right which is really going to eliminate that um, and and you really can't walk into the truck with the topper on it am I making sense here so I, I guess I'm I'm still questioning whether especially with the slide out because you're you know that's the whole reason the slide out is you can pull everything out to you sure um, and I, I kind of know how them slide them them tailgates work and I just wonder down the road you know, if you get them a little tweaked off, they are hard going in and going out. I just, I guess I'm kind of seeing that that baby's not necessarily needed. The, the what's not? What's the, the tailgate step. Because it slides in, it retracts into the tailgate. And I'm assuming if you get that, I'm sure it's like a bolt ladder. If you get a little bit tweaked, it, it just becomes. I don't know. The, the, the whole reason that was on there is Joe Ingebren with the League of Minnesota Cities, our insurance carrier wanted it on there when we began specking this and if you didn't have a topper on either of these and the slide out if you didn't have the topper and the slide out on either of them i would 100 percent agree with you on both of them options I'm i mean again unless, you, got, now, unless so. you can yeah i mean i would i'd, I'd agree with you ross I, I, I think there's yeah i mean i think you, i think you made good points there oh back please here Again, I'm a big pro on spray and bed liner. I just don't think with the side bot, with the with the 
tools on the side and the, built into the, which would be really nice. And I agree, be useful. You're not really going to be, that would be covering the sides. No, that's above. You know, I'm talking the sides, the box. No, itself. I know, but they're going to come into the truck. Yeah, above the So they'll the be kind of, I mean, they're going to kind of be protecting the sides because you're, you're not going to be, you know what I'm saying with that? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you haul in the truck that could do that much damage to the sides. I mean, I think you're hauling cement blocks and. But that'll be in the slide out by tons of those. So well, you throw a shovel in the back. Yeah. You know. But that's that's not going to ding up the side of a box. I mean, I've, I've owned enough pickups to, so I could certainly agree with yeah. Ross on that. You know, I'm fine with that. If that's I'm what just, you want to take off yeah. of it, that's fine by me. Like I said, I, I would be, if, if, if you didn't have a topper on there and you didn't have the slide out, and that, I would absolutely 100% agree. Yeah. But I, I just think that in 10 years, I bet that box is going to be still in pretty good shape. So 10 years, you can come from prove me wrong. So that's box side step, tailgate, and the spray and liner, those things. We can take those out when we order it, right? Correct. Okay. So if we take those out when we order it, 11.95. That brings after trade in. Because we're looking at the what was the last number they gave us for trade in? Seventy-two, I believe. That's what I yeah. thought it was too. And we were looking at trying to sell this one straight out. When you when you take the red truck, even with the condition it's in, um, it's we could probably sell it, take sealed bids, set a limit of you know a minimal bid of what the trade in is. And anything we make in excess of that is just more that comes off the cost of the truck. Um, but at 7,200, with eliminating those other items, um, that truck values, that truck cost to the city is now $23,550. Um, so it's uh, significantly less even than what the county's picking it up for. And well, we're adding a topper in that to it. That's why it's that. So, but well, anyway, I'm not. I don't. Are you, are you absolutely certain that the county's taking into account the trade-in? Because they may very well not at that price. But that's neither here nor there. Really. Twenty-eight thousand to three thirty thousand dollars is what the county um, bought the truck for on state bid. But they were adding things to it that they didn't sure. and, and whatnot. But it's still that's that was from the uh, um, gentleman. Uh, at Crowing County Engineer's Office that does the truck ordering. And I, I would entertain a motion. I will make a motion to proceed forward with the supervisor's truck from Mills Ford um, using the quote that is presented from Mills Ford with deleting the box side steps for 325, the tailgate step for 375, and the spray and bed liner for 495. Is there a second to that motion? A second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Then I would ask, um, do we need to do we need to pass or as or make a motion and all that to give you guys the go ahead to um, when the other truck is received that we can bid out or put the other one up for so we bid. can declare it excess equipment and yeah. sell it that would be great if you could make a motion to do that okay i'd make a motion that upon the um, reception of the new vehicle that uh, the existing supervisor truck be uh, labeled as excess equipment and that we give the city administrator um, the uh, go ahead to um, put it up for sealed bids not with a minimum bid of what the trade-in value is. Okay. I'll second, I'll second okay. that. Thanks, um, on the discussion point, Tom, could you ask Mills that if for some reason we do not get, because the truck is 
not going to be going anywhere it's not going to deteriorate or anything if we don't get a bid that is at least the minimum that we can still trade it in to I, see what I they can say. find out sure that be yeah after the deal though after huh. we take yeah. delivery of the truck yeah but yeah. they still might do it because we're locals I mean, it's pretty, hard to, sir, pretty hard to imagine that we can't get 7200 for a four-wheel drive. So, I, I know. I'm just so, trying to okay. cover all the bases. We could sure ask them, but I think a lot of times once that paperwork's done. Our, our service truck, you know, like, the service truck, they will do that, And if it didn't go through, then yep, perfect. You could have traded yeah, it I mean, in. I, okay, it doesn't hurt. Thank you, Mike. Do we have to order? I assume we have to order this. Um, what's our time frame? I, I haven't gotten one. Okay. Uh, last I did hear something though to the fact that one of Ford's suppliers they're started up making them again. Have they? Yeah. Okay. I, there may be a delay for that, but I, I don't know. It might be one that they have on a lot somewhere too when when I actually come to order it. So. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Moving along, E10 or E9, recommendation from the Public Works Committee to request updated quotes for the installation of the guardrail on Edna Lake Road. Correct. Um, my understanding from the Public Works, well, from the Edna Lake Group, that there is a they were strong, still strongly felt strongly about the guardrail, and um, Public Works is recommending that we send out for bids again to find out what it would cost now that the ground is thawed out um, so there's a motion on that I would entertain it <clears throat> I'll make the motion that we uh, that we um, approve requesting uh, updated quotes for the guardrail hopefully we can get the summer prices versus the winter prices second okay second by Johnson discussion on the motion I believe just just for clarification I don't know that I need to but I believe that it was said that uh, and I think maybe uh, Mark Callen you might have said there's not gonna be like the tapered ends on it it'll be the rounded I mean, some sort of I mean just correct yeah I don't even know if we need to go there but that's it's gonna have a the last December the ends are you know just the curved knuckles yeah it doesn't appear through but yeah. Even the speed limit, we're not seeing that we're not putting any crash barriers. Yeah. Okay. Nobody should be hitting this at 65, 70 miles an hour. I guess, yeah, does the motion state that we're bidding it to the exact specs we built it before? Yeah. Or do we need it? Okay. Well, it is. <coughs> yeah. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. E10. Ah, yes. Recommendation from Public Works Committee to accept the proposal for transportation planning services for CSAH 77 Nokomis Avenue area in, in Nisswa, Minnesota from SPAC Consulting. Um, you want to give up? This, this one, um, SPAC, there were two outfits that, uh, this is for the traffic study, there are two outfits that put in, SPAC is actually the, the most desirable of them, and they're the <coughs> lowest, lowest bid. Um, Grandview um, will be paying for this and they will be um, working with getting the money into the city or the escrow with the city or no just into the city correct they've already made an escrow payment okay so they'll reimburse us um, per this agreement when that bill comes and this is the traffic study for 77 in Nokomis and the Pines cross uh, Edna or uh, Lower Roy Lake Road, the Service Drive Road, uh, Nokomis and Forest, Forest and or uh, West Linden and Woodward, um, and East Linden, that whole area inside and on the highway. So, I would make a motion that we accept the uh, proposal um, from SPAC count, SPAC consulting for the County State 8 Highway 77 to Comus Avenue in Nisswa. Second. I kind of feel deja vu. Haven't we done this? Have we already approved this at the previous meeting? I don't think no. so. No, we approved to move forward with a with the 
looking but we at. Didn't, this right. Is, okay. All right. Yeah. My only, my only uh, surprise to this was I really thought the study would be a bigger study. I mean, they're talking 96 hours is what I had heard, and I'm like, wow, I didn't think that would really be very comprehensive, but if that's what is that's what normal, I, I guess. Yeah, SPAC does it for Marco's experience. They do this. They do it all over. That This is their thing. This is what they do, and it's kind of like a the Rasmussen poll. You can poll a certain number of people and get a pretty accurate number of you know how people are going to vote. If, um, so, and they're they're not looking at. I mean, they're looking at over the weekend type stuff. They're not looking at just you know they're they're looking at busy weekends, and they're looking at peak at peak times, and they're looking at not just like a Friday Saturday, but they're looking at like a Thursday Friday Saturday. Sunday over a whole weekend. So, mm -hmm. but okay. evidently that's how they do it. I guess it is. Yes. Um, all those. So. In, any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. E11 recommendation from the Public Works Committee to accept repair quote from D. Chantel excavating for the repairs at Niswa Avenue. John or Jenny, this is um, the, this is the um, the sewer where we had the backup because the valve. Um, it was initially being looked at, trying to make, do we reroute things and stuff. It turned in, out that there is a um, a manhole that's available. We have easement in that. It was covered over by a person's driveway, and. Um, if you have questions, if Mike wants to answer exactly what it was, but the bottom line is the, the, um, the they'll dig that out, they'll open that up, they'll put an actual manhole cover on it, and then now that it's there, we can ins inspect it and it replace the valve that failed and then make sure that it, but what it'll do is it'll give, should an alarm go off, should there be a problem, it gives staff a chance to go down there, pop it, turn it off, and stop the backflow from happening in the first place so it gives them it gives them an additional tool to to quickly stop something even if a valve fails they can now get there and shut it off right basically yeah. so so it's more of a repair now yeah this is a repair there's actually a check valve there and there's a gate valve the check okay. valve failed and the gate valve was invi not visible because it's under the driveway, like you said, John. This will put both of those inside of a manhole so they can be accessed in the future if they should fail again to be repaired. When you say there's a manhole there, there's no, there, there, there there's will be. not. There will be. Yeah, there will okay. be. I thought you said a garden manhole. I did. Covered. I did say that. Okay. But that just threw me for a second. I, I just wanted to clarify. That's why we're excavating to want to, to make a to, to make to put the manhole in and to replace the failed valve. Yeah. There would be a manhole there, except it was under a driveway. Normally, you would have had something different. There would have been a curb stop that come there up to the go. top. Thank yeah. you. That's what it was. <laughs> Too many terms. <laughs> oh, okay. So that. Okay. Okay. So the other ones we can dig up relatively easy, replace out. And, yeah. so. Okay. Okay. Jenny, we, do we have a motion? No, okay. we don't. Yeah. So I make a motion that we accept the quote from D. Chantel for the repair to this Y Avenue. I'll second. Discussion on the motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Item E12, recommendation from Public Works Committee to accept quote from commercial asphalt repair for spray patching on Hazelwood Avenue. I'll just turn this right over to Tom. <clears throat> what, what the quote shows is uh, I believe it's $3,200 and that's for one day of spray patching. I've contacted two companies recommended by the county to do that work. Only one gave us a quote and that's the quote you have in front of you. Um, 
prior to that we had some patches that we were considering from Anderson Brothers a year ago uh, but given we're going to resurface Hazelwood possibly next year uh, we didn't want to spend a lot of money on Hazelwood keeping it together but we do have to do something because it's in such condition that we'll be blowing the pavement off the off the road with the plow next winter possibly if we don't put some tack on it and so what this is is a spray oil that's pushed over the top of it and then they uh, spread a little rock over it roll it in and it gives just a little bit of a skin to kind of help hold things together on a temporary basis basically it kind of holds the puzzle pieces in place is this kind of a no-brainer I yes the, 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 the other uh, way we were looking at doing this would have been in the tens of thousands of dollars I'll make the motion that we accept the spray patching quote from commercial asphalt repair for Hazelwood at the cost of three thousand two hundred and ninety dollars per day not to exceed two days work second, second. Gary beat me okay. discussion on the motion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries E13, recommendation from Public Works Committee to accept the resignation of Bob Biro as a member of the Public Works Committee and to advertise for new members. I'll okay. make that motion. Okay. I'll second that second. with regret. Yeah. I'll add regret okay. to that, actually. Although we are calling down south and wherever they end up at, and we're going to let the local representatives know that if they need somebody to hound MnDOT, he's their man. <laughs> Are you moving, Bob? Are you moving? Yeah, I guess you are moving then. Not necessarily. This fell off the road. Oh no! Oh no! Before he finished, or no? Um. I would just like to thank you for the work that you have done for this city. I don't think people realize um, the time that you've spent on behalf of the city, and, and I sure appreciate it and appreciate it dealing with it. Well, when I, it's for sure when you get on the when you get on the trail to get something done, you do see it through. So, thank you. I think we all thank you for that. Definitely. Good luck with your new look. With your new location, Are you moving closer to family or something? Is that what the? Um, no, we're just, just moving. We're not close to the kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. So, uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thanks again, Bob. Next item, E14, authorized advertisement for sealed bids for 2018 street reconstruction projects. Fairly straightforward. Or is anything oh. anything that? Nothing. Nothing new from the public hearing last week. Um, <coughs> the next step to authorize for the bids for these four road projects. I'll make a motion that we authorize advertisement for sealed bids for the 2018 street reconstruction project as presented. Second. Thank you. Discussion on the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. E15. This is the additional um, piece to new business this evening. Authorize the city administrator and the city attorney to draft agreement between Niswa and ETOC Inc. for sewer connection fees and metering at Grandview Lodge. And if I'm not mistaken, this is primarily in regards to the hotel, or is it through for all the things they're doing? Um, this is for the hotel and the rec center that they are looking to secure financing and begin construction um, at this time. And so what, what Mark Rana has expressed to me that they need is the city needs to issue he'd request the land use permits um, for these buildings um, before we would typically issue the land use permits we would 
agree upon the sewer connection fees and this is a very large project and so we've um, talked about it internally as far as um, the the connection fees and how we come about that number and it's an estimation um, but Mark and Tom have gone through that standard um, calculation of formula that you would look at for these types of things um, and so I discussed with Mark basically we'd use this initial estimation of the 32 ERC's 30 for the hotel um, which is one for every two rooms in the hotel and then two for the recreation center um, we came up with a payment plan if you will for some funds to come over the next few months and then the balance would come once the hotel goes online and we have a year's worth of activity we can see what those actual hookup fees should be because at this point they could be overpaying they could be underpaying and we just want to get it right um, and so we would establish um, a year after the hotel is in operation we'd go back and take a look at all those things um, come up with the final number um, and because of the length of time that this would take place over I thought it would be most appropriate to work out some kind of agreement that we would have Tom help us with drafting so that everyone's on the same page should should anyone leave or, or change you know in the meantime we have that documentation the other piece to that um, that um, Tom Blomer Mark Rana and I have had discussions about is um, adding meters to their existing buildings to more accurately establish that baseline um, for something like the spa addition to know where the current spa is at as far as usage it just helps us um, for when that comes online as well in the future um, mark has agreed to do that um, this year so we can capture some of that data for for 2018 still so we would include that in the agreement um, i know it's a kind of a last minute thing um, but i wanted to put this together get your feedback if you're comfortable with moving forward mark has given his okay that he agrees to these terms if you will um, we'd get that from Tom and I'll make sure Tom can kind of jump in with some any thoughts or concerns um, but assuming approval um, from the council or anything addressed then I would be more comfortable moving forward with the land use permits and getting those issued um, or having Desmond issue them so that he can get his financing in place here very soon so that's where I'm at okay. happy so to answer questions so the 32 ERC's at 8,000 um, would Grandview pay a portion of that 8,000 per the 32 now and then it would be um, adjusted I mean, maybe they I don't know, would, they, would they would they pay the 8,000 would we say well pay 6,000 now we'll see in a year um, they, we, so they would actually pay um, what Mark proposed is they would pay $25,000 now roughly in the next week we'll say um, another 25 in 30 days and another 25 and 120 days so we'd get 75,000 this year with the balance of 181,000 to be paid or whatever that number actually ends up being after the hotel's been online so we would get um, almost eight ERC's worth of payment now well that, I mean I, I think that from my perspective I think that kind of makes sense because yep. um, I mean the hotel's not going to open until next year so right I mean if they pay 75,000 this year you know they're kind of paying well in advance it seems that, you know seems at least it's a good reasonable. down payment so to speak so yes by the, I'm sorry no go ahead by the motion tonight are we agreeing the numbers or are we agreeing to draft it up and they'll come back for approval I would request that we'd agree to the numbers if okay yep if, just, if you're when it says comfortable draft, with it Oh, to draft an agreement, yeah, just for, for, for Tom to create the agreement, yes, yes. So or do we not exceed the 181000 then in the future, even if the, if, the, if the metering shows that actually it should have been 42 ERCs? Yes, they will pay what the actual okay. amount is, All right. plus or minus. So, okay. Tom, any thoughts, concerns? Well, I think that's fine. I mean, obviously, if we do this, we're going to do it quickly, and we're going to sign off on it. Well, it's fair. Yeah. 100%. I'll make a motion that we authorize the city administration, the city administrator, and the city attorney to draft an agreement between the city of Nisswa and Etoc, uh Inc. for sewer construction fees and metering at Grandview Lodge, as presented. Second. 
discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. I know Mark would appreciate that yep, as well. Thanks, Jenny. Yep. Um, old business. We have no old business this evening. Council reports. Um, I really don't have anything tonight. Council members? Anything? Gary? Uh, Ross? John? Okay. Just to uh, make note of H, it's uh, our announcements and upcoming meeting dates. And I would seek a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Even though we maybe don't have Done. to do it. Thank you, everyone. Good meeting. Back to work.